So the problem today is a triangular section with a stress gradient going from 10 MPa to 0. And uh, if we only know what the area is, one half the base times the height and the inertia, the gross inertia of this, we can actually solve for what the resultant is, so the, the resultant uh, uh, force P and its eccentricity. Uh, we could do it using MY over I. If, if we only had that information, we couldn't use the force method. There wouldn't be enough information. We'd have to go back to first principles force method and use integration. So to avoid that, I'm going to solve it using MY over I. So the first uh, uh, properties we need is th are the gross area and gross inertia. And the area of the triangle is straightforward. It's one half of the base times the height, 300 times 400. Point 0.5 times 300 times 400. That's 60 times 10 to the third. millimeter squared. And the uh, inertia, so that's the area gross, the inertia gross is um, base times height cubed over 36. And this can be found in, in any, any steel design handbook or concrete design handbook. It's, it's generally readily available. 300 times 400 cubed divided by 36. So that's 533 e to the 6. Millimeters to the 4th. And the um, centroid of the gross section, that's 2 thirds times the height. So if we had a pure uh, axial force here, right that location, it, w it would make a uh, this kind of stress distribution, a pure axial stress distribution. Similar, if we had pure bending, the neutral axis would be at that point as well, two-thirds the height. And so what we do is uh, break it up into a axial load and a pure bending, pure axial, pure bending component, just like we did in the previous tutorial. Um, now, the uh, first thing we can calculate would be the stress in the pure flexural case, pure yeah, pure bending. And we know that this stress distribution from here to here, the absolute value would be 10 MPa because that's the stress distribution we're concerned with, 10 minus 0 MPa. So 10 MPa times 133 over 250 would be this stress here. So that would be 10 times 133 over 250, 5.32 MPa. Oh, it's 400. No, that's wrong. We're using four. It's a 400 uh, deep section over 400. So it'd be uh, 10 times 133 over 400. 3.33 MPa. And the stress in the base would be uh, 10 MPa times 267 over 400. So we're just distributing the stress top and bottom uh, for a total of 10 MPa. Uh, 10 times 267 over 400 is 6.68. And then if we take 10 minus 3.3, 10 minus 3.33, we'd have uh, 6.67. Constant stress, so it has to be 6.67 here. This plus minus this has to equal 0, which is basically the 6.67 plus minus 6.68 equals 0 on the top, 6.67 plus 3.3 .3 equals 10 MPa. Great. So we found the two stress distributions that superimpose to give us this uh, stress gradient here. Now all we have to do is uh, calculate the P and the E. So uh, we know that the P 
over the A equals the stress 6.67 MPA area gross. So the uh, P is equal to 6.67 MPA times the area 60 times 10 to the third. millimeter squared. So P would equal 6.67 times 60. And that'd, be, that'd put into kilonewtons, 400 kilonewtons. And the, all that remains now is to find out at what eccentricity that axial load acts would be. Because there's a bending component, it'd be ha it would have some eccentricity relative to this uh, centroid here, prob uh, up here somewhere. If there was no bending, then the uh, then the axial load would go right through with, through here, which would imply that this stress distribution would be 10 MPa top and bottom. But we do have bending because uh, we we see here there's a pure flexural component to it plus the the pure axial. So to do that, we would take M Y over I, and M is P E, P times E times Y over I grows equals the stress. So let's choose top top fiber stress from here to here, 3.33 MPa. So that equals P, which is 400,000 newtons times E, the unknown, times Y, the distance from here to the extreme fibers and bending 133 millimeters over I gross, which is 533 times 10 to the 6 millimeters to the 4th. And now we can solve for E. And I'll, I'll just uh, I'll just do it here. Let's say it's 3.33, which is this times 533 e to the 6, 3.33 times 533 e to the 6, divided by 133 times 400, 1, 2, 3, 000, 400, 000. E is uh, 33.4 millimeters. So we can write out the, uh, the axial load right on the diagram here. We know what the resultant is now. This force P acts at an eccentricity E, which is this. This is E here of 33.4. And the P is 400 kilonewtons. 400 kilonewtons. So just to save some time, I also worked out where the uh, resultant is in general terms. And it's always going to occur at 3 quarters the height for a triangle. The resultant relative to the base is 3 quarters the height. And the uh, axial load will always be uh, 2 thirds of the gross area. And also I, I worked out a, a second problem where I took the exact same section and inverted it. So you can see the base now is on the bottom, but the stress distribution is still at the top. And for that case, I found uh, the uh, axial load drops to 200 kilonewtons, and the uh, eccentricity is 66.7. But in general terms, it occurs at half the height from the base, and uh, the axial load is a third of the area gross. So it, ma it makes sense because now we, ha we have a, s a, l a large stress over a smaller area, which is varying down to a small stress over a large area, whereas before we had um, the the inverse, we had a large large area at the top with a large stress, smaller area at the bottom with a small stress. So that's why we have a higher axial load for this problem. We have more real more area available where the stress is high. That's that's the key. So 400 kilonewtons and drops to 200 kilonewtons.